Welcome to the Lawrence Nebula. About three years ago, a groove machine crash landed from the cosmos and ended up on our campus. Inside, we discovered Robert, who would teach us the secrets of the funk. And we're here to share those secrets with you today. The first thing you need to get truly funkalicious is a booty shake and groove. Let's hear some drums. Your body is filled with naturally flowing groove juices. To get that groove established, you need to take your inner groove juices and channel those into a steady rhythm on the hi-hats. Align your groovy chakras and put that energy into a strong kick on the bass drum. But this isn't all we're going to need. We need that fat bottom that funk fans so desperately covet. Let's hear some bass. In the words of the great Bootsy Collins, you gotta put it on the one. You know, everyone likes fat bottom. So tune in, turn up, and get funky. To get the funk fully in motion, you need some guitars or keys to generate that upper body chug. Syncopate and celebrate your inner funk. Sounds like we've got pretty much what we need. Remember, keep dancing and stay groovy. You'll know what to play. That's the funk.
songs i just get kind of hungry though i mean yeah. if you listen to magic bunch you get hungry yeah also i feel like i've just been drinking red dog since then and uh food goes really well with red dog <laughs> <laughs> red dog on the side of food <laughs> <laughs> so uh i just wanted to come here today to tell you a little bit about planet funk and uh all that we've learned about planet funk as of yet um, so the story as, as we know it is, it's actually recorded on our Facebook page. It was, it was dictated, well, no, it was, it was scribed by Nick Allen, dictated, dictated by, by the funk gods. Yeah. Dictated by the, the funk prophet, Rob, your, your child. Um, he could not be here tonight. He, yeah, unfortunately. Can rest in peace? <laughs> He's alive. Well, he's no, alive. he's he's resting in pieces, is what yeah. Marshall means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. he's in ORC basement. <laughs> yeah. In pieces. Resting uh, in pieces. Can, can we all take a drink for, for Robert? To Robert. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, so three years ago, we during trivia weekend, we had our team, Porky's Group Machine. Wait, this was freshman year. Yeah. Four years. Four ago. years ago. Yeah. Really three and a half if you want to count chronologically. Shut up. <laughs> I can't count, and chronological is not a word. <laughs> Freshman year, four years ago. <laughs> in Coleman, third floor, we had our trivia team, Porky's Groove Machine. It was an amazing time. Uh at some point during that weekend, I don't remember what day it was, but uh, we heard a very loud noise outside the, the dorm, and uh, so we all went outside and found this crashed spaceship that was constructed out of all manner of things, red dog cases, and yeah. mostly beer lacrosse games. sticks, and music notes, and music notes, yeah, the, the glue was primarily made out of just funk <laughs> sauce. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> so anyways, out of the rubble of this crash, uh, we, we saw just the, the a tip of a leg made out of beer cans sticking out and so we, we started excavating and, and unearthed this, this being, Rob Beer Beerchild, completely crafted out of red dog cans and uh, duct tape and hot glue <laughs> and funk sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that was on the inside. Yeah. 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 And uh, so anyways, we, we resuscitated Rob Beer. He, he told us his story, this, this wondrous tale of uh, the planet, planet Funk off in another galaxy somewhere, um, where there had been a recent rebellion against the, uh, the evil Lord Sauron who had, you know, commandeered the entire economy and culture of this planet for his own evil, evil... He, how can he you outlawed brunch and syncopation. How oh can you God. commandeer an economy? 
Oh my god. Are you to think about yeah, it. Yeah, god. Door. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you a nerd? <laughs> yeah, no. Fucking Sauron outlawed brunch and syncopation. It's because he's a dick. And so Porky funked him out of existence, you know? Yeah, so Porky created this groove machine, which just <laughs> happened to be the name, <laughs> <laughs> the name of our trivia team. <laughs> <laughs> it's some miraculous coincidence. <laughs> foresight. <laughs> That's foresight. just foreshadowing the story, I guess. <laughs> is that foreshadowing? Or is that not subtle enough? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, so, yeah, Porky had created this groove machine on Planet Funk in order to funk Sauron out of existence. And, uh,. He invited Sauron to come check it out, and at some point, Sauron went inside of the groove machine, and Porky turned it on, and it started funking him. Wait, what did Porky say? Taste my funk, fat balls! There you go. <laughs> Vital to the story. Uh, I didn't know that part. Unfortunately, Sauron... I knew fat balls. ...who is... Who was apparently a pretty competent guy himself used escape rope in order to call the trainer. Yeah, he used escape <laughs> rope in order to get to get out of the groove machine and actually uh, out of that dimension entirely. That galaxy. Well, he came to Earth. It's, yeah, that's it's not why. Certain exactly that's how why Porky works, sent the groove machine here. So Sauron came to Earth, and apparently, this is what we've been told, or what we were told by Robert, is that Sauron actually started Starbucks, which is. Kind of interesting. Very acidic. More like to Starbucks, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> about the song, though. The uh, song. About the song. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, Robbie told us this wondrous tale of this this amazing planet where now funk has come to reign once again since Sauron's expulsion, and uh, and we were so inspired by that that we decided we wanted to celebrate the beauty that a funky lifestyle can bring and we wanted to uh, just tell the people on earth about about the funk that's going on on planet funk and and maybe how that could uh, but ins inspire to live for inspire people to live better here you know here on earth does Sauron have any evil minions well I mean he people owns Starbucks and it. Starbucks is constantly been growing in power so I do just want to urge you as an audience member to be aware um, Whenever you enter a Starbucks establishment, it's really like trees. Like you're going, you're going, going to listen to our album. <laughs> so I think I've always been confused. Are the evil, sexy robots on Earth or only? Oh no, they're on planet. They're Fun. all on planet. Fun. They're, they're not, not evil not anymore, anymore though. They've been converted. Oh yeah, just yeah. Really sexy. They're just <laughs> they're sexy. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah. Sorry, like Robbie. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. He's I'm a handsome robot. He's a handsome. He's a sexy, he's a sexy robot. Sexy. He doesn't have hands though. But yeah, you guys, check out the drum solo on that track. Because these guys oh, yeah. tear the shit out of it. I forgot to talk about the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a celebration. You it's know? a celebration. Mm -hmm. There's so, some references to Red Dog and Funk and Balls. And it kind of reminds me of like Ode to Joy. Because like, that song is a celebration too, right? It's a celebration. And it's joy. a similar song structure. <laughs> Like the drum solo comes in the same place, so <laughs> <laughs> just like reminiscent. I don't know. Never the mind. same place as what? As the organ solo and what to join? <laughs> drum solo. And there's a drum solo. Yeah, there's there's a drum, drum, solo. Solo. drum solo. Also, Nick Allen's outside the window. <laughs> I didn't even know Ode to Joy was like an actual like song. I wasn't aware there was a drum solo. Yeah. It's a huge. Yeah, you guys are just. Is it like a shit. symphony the, or something? The whole yeah. song leads oh, up to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was a melody you learned on recorder. Yeah. I mean, it sounds kind of like an AC/DC drum solo, but it's still <laughs> like a drum solo. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Let me tell you all about this man I used to know He was a son of mine and don't you know I loved him so He never did no wrong take as young 
Cause now I raised him right But that'll change on a cold September Every time I pour up And this time he was acting strange He had a bottle in his hand He started raising hell And this is where he made his stand Step mother, I'm done Always trying to be your golden boy I'm through with wasting time And I was acting all shy and coy You taught me all those matters for now they do me no good Apologize, and in the past I always would. But I've learned better, Ma, cause you never taught me fun. But manners don't go very far when you never can please anyone. But now I think about the past, and all it does is kick my ass. That was the day, the day for all my. Pleading and begging He used to say He'd never get that way But I saw my little boy Turn into a monster Now we know that he'll just never be same. Cause he don't do a thing, he's told he hits the bottle every Saturday He didn't become the man that his mama so desired Come stop by the visit, you can watch him set the house on
song number two. Uh, Matt Gumby, you know, he can't be sitting here chatting about this one, but this is a Matt Gumby original composition, music and lyrics. And I think I think this one really really gives the album some of the context that perhaps otherwise it would lack. You know, you've got theme from Planet Funk, this joyful anthem towards you know partying, dancing, drinking, m making love in rivers of red dog. That's not explicitly stated in this song, but it's implied. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get Golden Boy, which is a very very different story. This uh, this song's written from the perspective of a mother. Talking about how her son goes off to college and starts drinking, you know, starts getting rowdy, stops doing everything he's told, and, uh, you know, he just can't be controlled anymore, you know, he, he goes out and starts his own life, and it's, uh, it's an interesting commentary on us. We just got an album review back from a friend of ours, Anastasia, who referred to it as the story of a boy becoming a man and defying his parents' expectations. Mm. That was a little different than the way that maybe we had approached it before. Well, I always puberty, thought though. of it as the story of a son that, you know, kind of went off the deep end, which is ironic when you listen to the rest of our album, though perhaps not. Also ironic, <laughs> because, because Matt Gumby did, did not go off the deep end. Not even a little bit, no. <laughs> Thanks for no, that. No, Matt Gumby, Gumby's a square. Just, 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 <laughs> totally nerd. No. Total nerd. Watch the videos. I mean, you, you can tell. He's the nerd in nerd funk. Oh, Nerdiness yeah. aside, it's, it's a serious, somber tune. Somber, the end's really somber, like, maybe happy not. sounding, though. But that's the, <laughs> yeah. one, that's the yeah, one to course. listen to. You know, when, when you've listened the to the album great. and you're starting to really wonder about our character, go back to track two. There they go. 
is a coming of age song. A nice follow up to the to Golden Boy. Beautiful follow up to Go Golden Boy is also a coming of age song. Puberty's a little more direct. Yeah, there are literally two lyrics to the whole Meaning song. Meaning less <laughs> subtle. What are you kidding? <laughs> One man's subtle. less subtle is another man's more subtle. Exactly. Marshall knows all about <laughs> subtlety. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Marshall's subtlety in his verse on this song for just a minute. Can I get some reactions? Anyone? Anyone? Marshall's verse. Great. Great. Stellar. Well, like the stop times that we added are probably my favorite part, but the fact that we stop every time Marshall sings, just it, it really showcases, you know... Marshall. This guy. Marshall I mean, it's to, frame, me, yeah. to me, this song is all about Marshall. So, <laughs> <laughs> one verse. so really, it's, well, the, the lyrics should be all waiting song. for Marshall's balls to drop, is what you're saying. Yeah. That's always how I envision it. <laughs> okay. I'm entirely convinced that Marshall's balls are like way up here for the first half of the song. <laughs> but before before then, they are they're up in the. But you you feel by the end of the song that they've dropped. Oh, I, they've dropped. Okay. It's, it's, it's really, I'm certain. Yeah, it's dropped. really hard yeah. to play the song so many times because my balls they move so much. They, they go up so high at the beginning and they drop every single time. And it so hurts there's a constant way. every time we play. It's just going back and forth. It's like and yo -yo it's balls. What's yo -yo your balls? What's your approach? What what were you thinking? You know when you when you say this. What the hell are you thinking? I think I would. I think I wasn't thinking. I think that was the trick. It came from yeah. the heart. It came from, from the, the balls. Heart. It came and straight from the balls. Up from the, the heart. Of, the heart <laughs> of my <laughs> testicles. It came from the heart of the balls. Yeah. Is where that came from. I just remember yeah. the first time we were in Larry's recording studio listening to it, and we all. Shit ourselves because it was <laughs> so ridiculous. Some quite literally. <laughs> yeah, that's, like that's a problem I had with the whole album a lot. Never that that one. Was, yeah, shitting, was shitting yourself in Larry's studio. Just pooped all the time during. Yeah, that but one. but like just more, don't tell Larry. More just in, in general though. Oh. <laughs> <Not just seriously. laughs> like, like right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this actually seriously. You know, I say this is. A coming of age song. I think you look at the history of our band, and this album really is our balls dropping. You know, like like we 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 were. This is our step into a into the HNL. You know, that whole nother level. I was talking about. Like we <laughs> we, we, were, level. we were playing around. We were playing reached. a few bars. We had a couple tunes, but now we finally put together. You know, eight good solid original compositions. And you know, we were just waiting until now. You know, the balls have dropped. And Porky's is Porky's is stepping into its adult life. Mm. You know, I think I think the song captures that sentiment. Mm -hmm. That was our first video done uh, by Brooks and released, and it got great reviews, mm -hmm. uh, even from my grandparents. Uh, my <laughs> grandfather, I call Poppy Gary. He called me on the phone after he saw it for the first time. He said, "I loved the video." Waiting for my balls to drop, waiting for my balls to drop. <laughs> there they go, there they go. <laughs> this one really is a crowd favorite. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. octogenarian relations have been have been a uh, 
a primary focus of the, the band for some time. Octogenarian? Yeah. Well, you made that word up also. <laughs> no, an octogenarian <laughs> is a person of 80 years eight, eight or decades. more. It's a really old octogenarian. So really, really a, 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 <laughs> like, like an 80 year old Somebody who would really understand the concept of balls dropping. So no, we've been interested in, in, old, in old folks, in blue hairs, since, Let's not be since ages, the beginning. Guys. Ages? <laughs> yeah, that's a real thing. Blue hairs, that's a slur. Yeah. Jesus shit Christ! <laughs> <laughs> can I insult anyone you else? You can't say that. Only we can say that. <laughs> Anyways, our first album was for Grandma's 2. Oh. <laughs> You're right. That's true. <laughs>
My full name is Larry, not Lawrence, Darling. And uh, I'm the director of recording services here at Lawrence. And pay no attention to those. They're, they're doing their own thing. Um, and I've been here uh, in this job capacity since 1996. I came here as a student to study trumpet in 1972. So I've been kicking around here a long time. I take on independent little projects, non-academic projects, as my time permits. And um, the Porky's project fell into a good place in terms of the school year um, where I had a little bit of extra time to play with. The record was, was made live, uh, so we had all, all the mics going with the whole band. The vocals were live, uh, the solos were live. And to top that off, we had something like seven cameras in the room shooting video, so everybody had to work around all this ridiculous stuff um, and make it still work sonically. You know, I, I mean, you can put mics out of the camera sight, but it's not going to sound very good, so we had to kind of, um, all had to compromise the video and the audio people to make the whole thing come off. Um, prior to the project, we had had a few meetings uh, regarding kind of the scope of the project, how many players, the instrumentation, the timeline, the budget, blah, 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 and figuring out uh, if we could really get this done. It's a big undertaking. I mean, not only the, the audio portion of it, but they're shooting video and, and all of that stuff at the same time. So they, they had a lot of irons in the fire and a lot of things to kind of pre-plan. And uh, as you go through that planning, you kind of uncover some potential pitfalls or problems and then you have to work those out and they were all pretty much worked out in advance uh, at least from my end um, so when they came in they were ready to go and to my surprise it went actually better than I thought it would you know engineers tend to work their butts off uh, for hours in front of the session and once you hit the red light you're kinda done you're babysitting meters and you're just watching things um, so I had a chance after the setup, which was just harrowing, um, to just kind of sit back, chill, listen to the music, and enjoy the performance. Well, it's Sunday morning and I of my eyes Pull the blinds Release the sides Feel my belly And I get that hunch Time to eat some Sunday brunch Sticky syrup on your lips Let's make brunch, babe Swing those hips I wanna munch, 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 munch All over your brunch, 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 brunch
Greasy sausage gets you hot. I wanna lick your muffin top. Baby, baby, make my day. Serve me up your fish fillet. The title track. Why don't you introduce right. this, Marshall? So, Magic Brunch, the uh, title track, it's it's my personal favorite tune. Magic. Every time I play it, I get this feeling inside of me, and I can't explain it. I think it's I think it's a thing called love. <laughs> <laughs> but there's everything I. Everything I want uh, in a tune, there's a sweet baby-making jam, there's a sensual trumpet solo, and I get to sing some falsetto, and it's there's a nice jam at the end where we climax, if you know what I'm talking about, and it's, I, I... What do we refer to that as, Marshall? Um, something with gasm, right? I want to. I want to be clear. This song is not a metaphor. 
Okay, just so everybody, like, anybody who thought it's <laughs> on record We've now. been getting anybody, people, like, talking, asking us about, like, all the hidden meanings of this song or whatever. But the truth is we were just really, really love Pride. <laughs> yeah, I know something about the bone to understand Magic Brunch. I've also never had a blueberry blitz, Bone appetite. And I don't think that Right, this is bone appetite. Not the bone. Okay, uh, 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 blueberry blitz. Uh, Matt Lowe, can you explain like what the bone is, bone appetite to you? What the bone is, what brunch is to you at Lawrence University? Uh, yeah, yes. My favorite time. So Bon Appetit is our catering service here at Lawrence University. My favorite time to go to Bon Appetit is brunch. It's by far the best. There's the greatest variety of what? Oh yeah, you bring a red dog in on a on a Saturday afternoon. It's just. It's great. Actually, what it is is it's Supreme. That's one another name that we have given Magic Brunch for times when it proves itself to be truly supreme. Uh, but yeah, brunch is great. There's a huge variety of you know breakfast foods. Uh, they have a salad bar out still. There's like pasta dishes if that's what you're into. Brunch pizza. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can make uh, ultimate waffles. You know, just all sorts of amazing mm-hmm. things can be created during Magic Brunch and consumed. What about you two? Brooks and Finn, you guys are on the outside. You know, what Filming is... each other. <laughs> 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 what, what, what's... How do you feel about, <laughs> about Planet Funk? Or sorry, about Magic Brunch or Planet Funk. Magic Brunch as as an album or Magic Brunch as as an idea as a, a lifestyle as a lifestyle Ooh, as a brand as a name. as a as lifestyle a as a corp- as a cult as, as a, a lifestyle I would have to say that I agree with it <laughs> <laughs> as a cult I'd probably drink the purple Kool Aid with you guys <laughs> it's uh it's red Sweet. actually yeah oh, red yeah. okay well, I think of it more as kind of golden <coughs> amber yeah. A nice amber, golden.
album uh, juvenile oh yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> in a really good sense of the word you know so many players so many people take themselves so seriously and I get seriously tired of serious people um, but when they put on their juvenile shtick with their music they're extremely serious at the same time so you know there's that little conundrum of being uh, juvenile and childish and playful versus being very serious. So, yeah, uh, it's an interesting blend that they have. Porky's is a potpourri of uh, uh, many musical styles, a lot of jazz undertones and um, kind of R&B stuff, a lot of soul funk stuff. Um, spiced with quite a bit of uh, humor and uh, decadence, I would say. Um, all coming together in a rather comical package of, uh, of players, uh, good players at that. Uh, I think the Porky's project shows what sort of direction a, a student-motivated thing can take, and I'm sure it's improved their playing in all of their other ensembles, and and their general appreciation and understanding of music as they go along too. And I worked with these many of these players in various configurations. Part, uh, part of them are part of the heavy metal ensemble. A lot of them are in the, in the jazz ensemble or in the jazz band, which I've done projects for all three of those groups. We've got the involuntary string uh, bluegrass group that uh, some of these guys play with. Um, so they keep popping up. And every time they do, they're playing the same instrument in a whole different style. And I really enjoy that. I appreciate it. Too many times people get a one-trick pony thing going. They're a great oboe player. And all they can play is, you know, 
Mozart and stuff like that. Uh, and if you ask them to improvise, they would first ask you what that meant, and then they would say, no, I can't do that. Um, so I appreciate the, the width of their, uh, uh, their diet right now, their musical diet. Um, so it's, yeah, it's great to see these guys play so many styles and do it well and continue to improve in those styles. It's part of the liberal arts musical experience, I think. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to tell you a story about a little friend of mine. His name is John Argyle. John Argyle's got a pretty unfortunate story. It's, it's rather sad, but I'm going to share it with you today because it's important that people know. So, John's very best friend in the world was his dog, Fuzzy Wuzzy. Every day they would, they would go out for walks and they would find some, some fun different activities to get themselves into. They like to walk by the seaside and through parks. And today, John had this lovely idea to bring his dog, Fuzzy Wuzzy, out to a local horse ranch because horses were his other favorite thing in the whole wide world. And he figured that maybe he could spend a day horseback riding out on the plains as Fuzzy Wuzzy ran along at the horse's heels and oh, what fun they would have. So John and Fuzzy Wuzzy walked down to the ranch and they walked up and the ranch owner was a friend of John's. His name was Bill. John said, hey Bill, how's it going? You know, and Bill said, oh, come on in, John. I've got a horse all ready for you to ride. And so they fitted this horse, whose name was Mary, with a saddle, and John got on it, and they went out onto the plains with Fuzzy Wuzzy nipping at the horse's heels. Well, John started to ride. He was going at a nice trot, but then the horse started to go faster and faster and faster and faster until it reached a speed that John didn't even know horses could go. It was going so fast that the trees began to blur by him. He couldn't see anything except for the lights passing his eyes. Unable to control Mary at that high speed, John screamed, ah! and he was tossed off the back of the horse. But alas, his foot got tangled in the horse's long tail and he was dragged along on the ground behind the speeding animal, bouncing up and down against the rocks and in and out of trees. Just as if things couldn't get worse, a stone got kicked up by the horse's heel and struck John square in the testicles. The pain was almost unbearable. He cried out again, hoping his dog Fuzzy Wuzzy would come to comfort him as his balls swelled and swelled and swelled. Surely enough, the dog did walk up, but once he saw John's freakish, enormous balls, he ran away in terror with his tail between his legs. And thus, John had lost his one true friend in the world. Just as if nothing could get any worse, a group of wandering middle schoolers walked by. They'd probably been hanging out in the woods, getting up to no good as middle schoolers are wont to do. And as soon as they saw John, well, this is what they had to say.
on the album is I say <laughs> cat stack what was that uh, you said cat stack you say say as well, way? Please? no no screw you I say cat stack that is backwards for you that was not backwards that was not, not backwards. backwards cat stack come <laughs> on Peter you get moving on yeah God damn it, Peter. Why he plays drums <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't even yeah. understand what we're talking about so anyways about. uh <laughs> so yeah so cat stack is a song that's about cats um <laughs> I still don't know what the lyrics are because I, I have never listened to them. Are we at now? Top stop. There we go. Are we at now? Top yeah. Um, yeah. This was our very first tune. This was this who was wrote a, this song? This I don't song. even know who wrote we all this. Wrote this song. Yeah, the song is named name. after Travis's shirt. He was no on the very first day that our band became a band. Travis was wearing this shirt for the musical Cats, <laughs> and. A stupid shirt on the way out. And so now it's cat stack, and yeah, now we're a man. It's a palindrome we forward and backwards. It backward, like any any word is when you read it forwards <laughs> and then backwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any word is. But, but cat yeah, stack so just has a nice our, ring to our it. Our first ever song. That's why we wanted to make sure we put it on this album, um, because it means means a lot to us. It is a total palindrome. Cat stack means a lot to me too, because it was the first song I ever played with you guys. 
Yeah, we just when you were like, hey, we need a drummer, come jam with us on this tune. And Peter, so, it was literally the first song we ever had. Yeah, but my story's still we were, valid. Oh, yeah, yeah. My story's still valid. We were playing it. It was the <laughs> only song we for, played for a whole day. It's valid like, for we everybody. Like we, walked, we walked into the jazz room because we wanted to jam. This was fall of our sophomore year. We were just like, hey, we need to play. And we see Johnny Rocket Fingers sitting in there, like, play with us. He was playing drums at the time, actually. Yeah. We told him to yeah. play keyboard. It turns out he's a, he's a great pianist. He uses rocket fingers, you know. Not um, a lot of fingers. Yeah, Cat Stack, Cat Stack was the result. People really liked the tune. It's got a catchy lick, you know? Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing is that the lick is also catchy backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, so on on this process, we took, what was it, like a day and a half to figure out how to play this entire piece in reverse. Rhythms, it's melodies, it's words. Yeah, the lyrics. It took a long time. Yeah, it took like at least a day and a half and like a very long night of And I'm not sure we've played it perfectly ever since the album. <clears throat> so all of you folks who like to flip your music around backwards, do it. With this song? <laughs> <laughs> it does sound really good, actually. You can hear the original yeah, melody. Yeah. It sounds yeah, pretty it's, scary. Yeah, it's actually, we've good. already I've already posted the reversed oh, yeah? the oh, version really? on SoundCloud, so you can already listen to it without doing any work at all. Cat stack. <laughs>
we know how to help. Come on. Yes, that's how we are now. Stop now. Stack? Have you seen the ghost of John? Long white bones with the skin all gone. Ooh, ooh, wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? Have you seen the ghost Have you of John? Seen Tuning in, grab yourself a red dog, get funked. They're uncommonly smooth. <laughs> Stay uncommonly <Cheers>. smooth. <laughs> Bye. Cat stack. Cat stack. Cat stack. <laughs> drink red dog. <laughs> drink it. Drink it. Drink it. Drink it. Drink You should turn your camera off before anyone does anything else stupid. <laughs> I'm pee so bad. Oh, <laughs> I hope you got good. that. Very nice. You should just have, I have to pee so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pee backwards. So I have to pee so bad. I have to pee so bad. Alright, let's be done. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's how you know you're gonna be sick at it. Sick edits, dude.